The power supply is removed, the wires connected to the middle rails. The metal rod is given a gentle push so it rolls freely to the right as shown in the diagram. The magnetic field is still directed into the page. Okay, so this is a generator situation. Okay. Uh, calculate the voltage induced across the metal rod as it moves through the magnetic field. You are given the following information. We've got the strength of the magnetic field, the length of the metal rod, the distance between the parallel metal rails, and the speed of the metal rod. So uh, the formula we use for the voltage induced is V equals uh, B um, VL, where V is the velo this is a voltage induced, V is the strength of the magnetic field, which we've got, um, V is the velocity or the speed of the metal rail, and L is the length that we're considering. So now the trick that we have to be aware of here is um, we're going to have, again, two different lengths um, to choose from. We've got this length here where if we were to run a voltmeter um, compared to this length here, if we were to run a voltmeter, um, <coughs> excuse me, we would have uh, two slightly different voltages because we're dealing with two slightly different lengths. So if we're considering just the length um, for the voltage that's running in, in, this, in this loop here, uh, that's sorry, that's driving current in that loop here, then that's the voltage we worry about. If we're after the um, entire voltage of the metal rod, then this is the one that we're after here. And it says in the question, calculate the voltage introduced across the metal rod as it moves through the magnetic field. So the voltage increased across the metal rod would indicate to me that you are trying to find um, this one here. Now, um, you can plug numbers into the formula to work out what the answer is. Um, but that doesn't tell you which end is positive. Um, if you use the um, right hand rule, if you consider a single um, positive charge that's moving it's to the right, uh, let's just check, yeah, freely to the right, so that's the direction of the velocity. So that's our direction of conventional current with the right hand slap rule on a charge. Fingers into the page, so the force on a positive charge will be upwards, which means this end becomes positive, this end becomes negative. Um, so, what's a little bit tricky about this is, um, as soon as current flows in this loop, um, you're balancing out the charge um, between these two points. However, this section and this section is still going to remain uh, with its charge imbalance. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit hard to know exactly what's going to happen um, because of this. But, in any case, um, we can still do the calculation. Um, I'm pretty certain we're supposed to use the length of the distance between the, the rails. Uh, sorry, the length of the total rod, because it asks us for the voltage induced across the metal rod. Um, yeah, okay, so the answer, 5, whoops, 5.3 times 10 to the minus 4, and it's volts as the unit, so... Um, we'll see when the real answers come out and if there's explanation to help with that. Describe what happens to the movement of the metal rod as it continues to move through the magnetic field. So there will be, uh, it will come to a rest. Come to a rest. It will slow down and stop. And the explanation, because there is current flying uh, in, the, in the rod, um, it will induce a force from the motor effect. Um, and um, that opposes the direction um, that caused the current in the first place. So that's going to eventually cause it to come to rest. And the reason it comes to rest is because there's no other forces acting on this. If it was falling in gravity, you'd have that constant force, so it would just slow down to a constant velocity and continue on. But in this case, you've given it a push, and then you just let it come to a rest. There's no other forces acting on it.